What is Wing Chun? Some of you will say it's a martial art. Some will call it Kung Fu or Kung Fu. So what does all that mean? What, what is martial art? The word martial relates to anything that is military. So in other words, it's a, a military art. Another way of putting it is it's the art of war, which is the title, book, uh, title of a book written by a Chinese general, Sun Tzu, uh, during the 5th century BC. His book was titled in Chinese, Bing Fa. Bing Fa is martial, Fa is methodology. It's considered the first book ever written on the strategy and tactics of warfare. This book is still being used today in all the military academies worldwide. Not only that, it is also being used by business people and lawyers in studying how to, use, how to negotiate and deal with conflicts with strategy and tactics. The word martial art in Chinese is actually Wu Yi. Wu means military or martial. Yi is art. Or sometimes it's called Wu Gong, military training. Gong means exercise, training, work. Or sometimes also called Wu Shu. Wu again is martial, Shu is methodology. Now, there were many, many uh, Chinese generals who were very famous for their martial arts skills. One of whom being a general by the name of Yue Fei, who lived in the 12th century uh, during the Southern Song Dynasty. He joined the military when he was 19 and moved up to the rank of general. And he had obviously studied the art of war, like all Chinese uh, officers. And he was known for his uh, strategy, one of which was being training small numbers of soldiers, skilled soldiers, instead of having masses of large unskilled soldiers under him. So uh, there were events or battles where he, his army was outnumbered and yet he won, his uh, soldiers won. And this is not uh, unique because you have heard about the 300 Spartans and uh, other uh, battles where skilled soldiers were able to defeat opponents that were three times or even hundred, uh, ten times more than uh, their numbers. Now, Yue Fei was known to have uh, learned some martial arts, quite a few types of martial arts. Uh, perhaps it was, uh, he had gone to Wutan, which was near his home base in Henan. And he had also uh, supposedly learned from some very famous and skilled masters. And then, in turn, he taught his soldiers and officers. Now, the officers got uh, much more extensive training, and particularly, particularly on uh, Qigong, which developed the body and strength and endurance. Now, um, UFO was known to have uh, exceptional abilities and strength and skills. Now some of the martial arts that were associated, associated to him uh, were the Eagle Claw, uh, Xing Yi, or Xing Yi, and uh, also one that uh, he developed called the 108 Locking Techniques. Now it's understandable why he, he, there were uh, these grappling techniques that he taught because when you fight, uh, when you're fighting your enemy, 
soldiers. Uh, they are actually they're wearing armors, and so the punching uh, the body and so on was quite ineffective for head because the the soldiers would have helmets. So, uh, or in the armor had uh, little spikes. So it made sense that the, you know it would. Uh, the grappling technique would be more effective if it was man-to-man, hand-to-hand fighting there. So they can work on the joints, elbow, wrist, shoulder joints, neck, knees, and so on. So martial art. So what does art mean? Art, of course, as we understand, is expression of one's uh, feelings, emotion, that can go into paintings, music, architecture, okay? and uh, all these things in, uh, involve certain high skills uh, and, and balance, harmony, structure. All these things are involved in any kind of art. So in uh, military, martial art also required these characteristics. Uh, it's not about just sending a bunch of wild guys and, and, and go fight uh, with just brutal strength or uh, just, um, you know, you're not hiring soldiers who are just madmen. But you, to, to make them skilled, we have to have all this skills and so on. And the martial arts also requires, just like art, grace, beauty, aesthetics. Okay. So form, some kind of form. So all these things create a good martial fighting system. Now the question is, is Wing Chun really a martial art? So technically I'd say it is not. It is, uh, it is not related to any military type of fighting. Although the principle is Okay, the principle is still about the art of war, strategy, tactics, and it's dealing with uh, the concept is dealing same as warfare. However, it's a bit more. Which actually, the um, Wing Chun is a, a civilian art. Now, a lot of these uh, soldiers and uh, generals and officers, when they retired, they went back to the villages and they continue practicing the art. And of course, uh, that interested some of the villagers uh, who came and asked uh, the, the soldiers or generals uh, to teach them uh, out of respect and, and, and seeing what they're doing. And the soldiers or the officers wanted to continue practicing the art and, and decided to teach the civilians as well. So that's how from uh, the military art, it went into uh, the civilians. So, actually, in in um, in China, uh, it wasn't uh, called martial arts, the civilian arts. Uh, they were usually called Quan uh, Fa. Quan Fa. The two words Quan uh, means the fist or the way of the fist. Fa means the way, actually, the way or the methodology of the you know the fists. And uh, so that was actually the, the common uh, usage or uh, the name for homespun martial arts. Now, according to my great grandmaster Ip Man, uh, the Wing Chun was homespun. It was uh, passed down originally from Abbas Mwei or in uh, Mandarin Wu Mei, an abbess to a lady by the name, name of Yim Wing Chun, who later on taught her husband Leung, Leung Bok Choi, or Leung Bok Chao. Uh, and together they systemized the art, and uh, the husband then named the art after his wife, Yim Wing Chun. Now, of course, they adapted the art for civil, civilian usage, day-to-day -day usage. 
So we, we can tell that it's not really a martial art, it's particularly, particularly Wing Chun because uh, Wing Chun has no military weapons of the time. So there was no training with any long swords, broad swords, big swords, spears, or axes, or any of those weapons. Uh, it was very simple. Uh, it does have uh, uh, knives. Okay, uh, so you can say the knives are street fighting. Okay, um, and a long pole, which was actually used uh, to push off uh, these uh, uh, dinghy boats. And uh, so, Wing Chun, uh, I don't consider it actually as a martial art, but for the name's sake, for the you know simplicity of uh, uh, communication, we'll just call it martial art. And it, basically, it's, it's something that uh, the Western martial arts historian decided to call all kinds of fighting system from Asia martial art. And um, so, uh, we'll call it martial art for the time being. Okay. And in fact, the word Chuen Fire is not even uh, used very often anymore, even in China. Okay. So, but it was never Wing Chun, Tai Chi, Pa Kwa, they were never called Wu Yi, Wu Gong, or uh, Wu Shu. It was never that called that, it was I call, I, I called Chuen Fa. Generally, it was just you know, Chuen Fa. Da Chuen, Da Chuen means, you know, playing uh, the fist with the fist. Okay, when you talk about, you know, practicing uh, the, uh, a fighting system, it was called Da Chuen or Da Chuen Fa. So there are um, uh, speculations that uh, Wing Chun practitioners were also insurgents against the Manchurian government that ruled China at the time. So, um, but there's no uh, written record of it at all. There's no written record that uh, Wing Chun was taught to the military or that uh, there were insurgents who were uh, Wing Chun practitioners. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but it's a speculation. The truth of the matter is that the Manchurian government uh, ruled China for 300 years. When they occupied China, they conquered uh, China. Uh, the Manchurians were a small country in, uh, far northeast of China, a very small country, but they were able to uh, conquer uh, China because the Chinese were fighting amongst each other, all, all the warlords and so on. So they were able to uh, conquer China. However, they, they ruled China for 300 years. So uh, the 300 years, it's uh, longer than the history of uh, Canada or USA or many countries. So in reality, th that 300 years, the Manchurians became Chinese. They were in China, so they became Chinese. And the Chinese were actually were also uh, living the way of the uh, Manchurians. The cultures uh, changed and intermixed, and basically they were Chinese. The Manchurians were Chinese. So you can say that the insurgency began when first, when the, the Qing Dynasty conquered, the Ming Dynasty took over the Ming Dynasty, so they were um, insurgents and eventually it was put down and and uh, people as long as they had a good emperor uh, things were uh, peaceful so when somebody came on who, who wasn't a good ruler then there was some insurgency popped up and um, at the end of the Qing dynasty which was the last dynasty of China was ran by uh, Empress Empress uh, Dowager and she squandered all the money and used it all on her palace like the Forbidden Palace that we know now that we see and wasn't putting any money towards the military so when the European countries came and, and started colonizing China and the military wasn't able to to fight them off so there was a lot of uh, unsettled uh, people, unhappy economy went down and all the common um, 
citizens were uh, were suffering. So consequently, you know, some uh, insurgency rose up again. Okay. And uh, there were the insurgencies were mainly in the capital, uh, Beijing, and uh, the old uh, capital, Nanjing, and also were in, in Tianjin. So um, uh, again, in Canton, there were some, but not uh, particularly well known. So you can't say that. Uh, uh, I, I don't believe there was really so much of this uh, insurgencies uh, going on in um, in uh, other parts of China, but perhaps they were in small pockets of insurgencies, and maybe there were Wing Chun practitioners who were also insurgents, but we don't know that for sure. Okay, so the in fact uh, some uh, new Wing Chun practitioners of this. Uh, not not even this century, but the, for the last 10, 20 years, are uh, starting to claim that yeah, uh, that the story that Grandmaster Yip Man had uh, uh, told about the origins of Wing Chun is not true. They, this is what they're saying, and um, I don't buy that. If I were to believe someone, I want to believe someone going to the past, from the past, like Grandmaster Yip Man, who was born in... Uh, 18 uh, the, uh, the end of 1800s and and the oral history was passed on to him and he passed on to us whereas the, the information we're getting today are people who are alive today who, uh, who were not from from the past so who are we going to believe especially when it's passed uh, down orally okay so I don't believe uh, uh, the other story I, I believe uh, Grand Master Yiman's story because uh, it makes better sense to me because the art is still, even if it wasn't true, it's very much uh, related to the feminine part. It's not a yang energy uh, martial art, but um, the balance of the two. There's definitely yin energy. It's a more female oriented. It's kind of a perspective of a fe female, okay, the martial art. So, I mean, for a man to practice uh, Wing Chun, you have to almost think and become a woman inside, okay? There's a woman part of you. But that, that's something else we can talk about when we go further into the lessons of uh, Wing Chun. Now, the other uh, description of Wing Chun as being Kung Fu, yes, uh, today we can say it's Kung Fu, but by the same token, it's a misnomer. The Western martial arts historians decided to lump all the Chinese martial arts under one generic name called Kung Fu. Okay. However, they didn't do that with Japanese martial arts. You know, there's no generic name for all Japanese martial arts. We have Karate, we have Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Kendo. They all have their own names, but no generic name for, for the, all of Japanese arts, and neither is there one for Korean. Korean, we have the Taekwondo, Tang Soo Do, Hapki Do. Those are the names of the arts, but no uh, uh, generic name. But why did the uh, Western um, uh, martial art historians uh, call all China, lump all the Chinese martial arts into one uh, generic name? Well, perhaps because there were so many of them, okay, so that they couldn't uh, uh, categor categorize them. Uh, and so they decided uh, to just call it one generic name, Kung Fu. And uh, also, well, when they tried to list it, uh, when somebody uh, did try to list it, there was over 300 of them. But actually, there are even more than 300 different kinds of martial arts uh, or fighting arts or Chuan Fa in China. Okay. Different families develop and have their own names, just like you know, the Chuan family called the Chuan Tai Chi, then Yang, and then you have Wu family for Tai Chi and other martial arts also are uh, some of them are named after the family, and just like Wing Chun is named after the, uh, the founder, Yim Wing Chun. And, um, 
And then there are w uh, other ones that's named after animals, insects, and, you know, uh, and so on. And so, it's not only a misnomer uh, because of, uh, you know, the categorizing or lumping of uh, Chinese martial arts, but the word Kung Fu doesn't mean martial arts or a fighting system. As, as I mentioned earlier, uh, martial arts is Wu Yi. Okay, so, why Kung Fu? Now, it's probably because these uh, the Westerners heard the uh, word being used often to describe a martial artist's uh, ability. So actually the word Kung Fu, Kung means again training, work, uh, represents accomplishment through discipline and work, hard training, work. And Fu actually means, is referred to husbands or head of the house. Uh, the uh, top gun or uh, the uh, big honcho, okay, the big boss, okay, so the word is used to describe somebody who is very skilled in, in their trade, so it could be a cook, a driver, a mechanic, you say, oh, this cook has great kung fu, okay, or kung fu actually, I'm sounding like the westerners call it kung fu, but it's kung fu, and Cantonese say kung fu, okay. So we say this person has great skills, has good skills. So that's Kung Fu. Okay? So uh, it is not martial arts. Okay? So Kung Fu, uh, today it's, it's used and we, we accept it. We call it Kung Fu now. But it was to, just to let you know, it's, it's not the correct uh, uh, terminology for um, military or martial art or civilian art, fighting art. Now, I want to ask you, so after all this, um, what is Wing Chun to you? You know, why uh, you were interested in uh, learning Wing Chun? So, maybe a lot of you were uh, inspired or, uh, you know, impressed uh, about Wing Chun or from the movies, from yeah, recently, all these Yip Man movies, and then uh, also uh, several Wing Chun movies that came out in the past. Now, if that's those are the reasons, I can tell you, of course, movies are movies. It's all for entertainment, and in fact, most of it is you know, not true. Everything in the movies, okay. Now, or if you were, you know, joining because you want to be a Mr. Tough Man, you know, be able to fight everybody and win every fight. If that's the case, then you're better off going in the street and picking fights every day. You fight, 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 and you're going to become good. And that's the reality, eventually. Yeah, you may lose an eye, have a broken nose, like me. I used to fight a, like, uh, a lot when I was a kid. Um, you lose some teeth. Okay, you have cauliflower ears, okay, you may end up with a limp, whatever it is, okay, but you could end up being a very good fighter. You know, so if that's the reason, then yeah, if you want to be a tough guy, fighter, yeah, or join uh, boxing and uh, MMA, go, go and fight in the ring. You're better off doing that. Or become an actor. If this movie's impressive, become an actor. You can play fight, play fight all, all, all through, you know, your life in there. Become a stunt man, you can play fight. Okay? And maybe one day you become so good, you get the lead part. And you have, you, your fights are always guaranteed for you to win. Even against 10 guys, 20 guys. Okay? So, if those are the reasons, yeah, then uh, don't join this Wing Chun club or, you know, a school. Because it's really not about that. Fighting is only a small part of this, uh, the whole system. Okay? And as I said, it's an art. Okay? You're learning a lot of things. There's far more benefits than self-defense. But I can tell you this though, you have a better chance of surviving a fight or winning a fight 
than if you didn't do anything. You have no training at all, right? Then you're clumsy. You don't know yourself. You, because you know that you don't know. But if you have some training, uh, partic particularly a good martial art, they're just like all, all everything in life. You have good musician, bad musician. You have good architects, bad architects. You have good um, cars, bad cars. Okay, you have good martial art and bad martial arts. So you have uh, the good ones. If you learn a good one, then you create, you know, develop some good habits, and the chances of you surviving and winning is very good. That's all. But the other benefits far outweighs the fighting aspect of it. So what does it offer? Well, let me start off by saying that it is a way of life, a way how you live your life. You learn. From Wing Chun, you learn a lot. Okay. So how did this come about? Well, let's start off this way. You go back to the, uh, the cultural history of China. Now, everywhere in the world, during the uh, Stone Age and, and so on, there was shamanism because people didn't know any better. They were scared when there was a thunder or, or earthquake or tsunami or a hurricane. They thought it was some spirits that caused it because you did something wrong. And some, uh, some guy claiming himself to be a shaman would, you know, uh, would uh, put spells on you and so on. And, and, and people believed that because they didn't know any better. But later on, uh, some of this shamanism eventually be, uh, developed into uh, religions. Okay. And uh, some of the religions were pretty good, good stories and sellable. And that's why we still have religions today. But in China, never, they never had any religions. And when, when I talk about religions, it means uh, something to do with divinity. Okay? No one claimed to be a god. No one claimed to know God or know about God. Nobody claimed to be a prophet. Okay? So in China, there were Philosophers only. We had philosophers like Lao Tzu. His philosophy eventually got called Taoism. Tao means the way, a Taoism. Okay. And uh, then you had Confucius, who taught again also a way of life. And later on, Buddhism came in through, China, through India. And that's also actually a philosophy, it's not a religion. There's no God. Again, it is again where when Buddhism entered into uh, different countries, they took the shamanism and, and, and also mix, mixed it with Buddhism. Okay, and then the people are praying to Buddha and making offerings and, you know, and uh, uh, hoping to get a better life uh, in either uh, reincarnation or they even start believing in heaven and hell. In Buddhism, some of the sects. Okay. But in reality, it's not to do with anything, with any kind of divinity. It's a philosophy, a way of life, a way of living in harmony with nature, with your fellow human beings, and all the life that surrounds you. That's what Buddhism is about. So is Taoism. And so is. Uh, Confucian, Confucianism. So it's really philosophy. And eventually, when martial arts or the fighting arts came to the civilian life, they incorporated that together because they realized that there's something to physicality that will help a person mentally as well. And we know today, today we know that it works both ways. It means you have your mind, you make up your mind to do something and physical and you're able to do it. Eventually you accomplish that physical um, challenge. On the other hand, you can also do the reverse. Okay? Through physicality, doing things physical that you're going to improve your mind. 
Okay. And for example, there are children with um, uh, brain injuries are given what they call pattern patterning. So if they can't crawl, crib, you actually you take a parents would take you know the arm and you know, and move, one parent will move the arm back and forth, the other one uh, will grab the leg this way, and then maybe another one will turn the head. So we simulate this crawling action, and that is that information is input into the brain, and then the, the child is able to uh, start uh, creeping and crawling, eventually standing and walking and so on. Okay, can be done uh, reversed. Okay, so. What this is, does is they realize that this learning martial art can help a person calm down and, and also basically all this energy that you have, you're going to put it to good use and eventually uh, better yourself, become a better person. How does that happen? Well, any martial art requires a lot of patience, diligence, dedication, Respect for your teacher, respect for your uh, fellow students, responsibilities. Okay, you 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 responsibility so you don't hurt your uh, fellow students and so on. And these are the things that will eventually you know, build your character. You do it long enough. Okay, and in fact, in the old days, you know, a teach this uh, somebody would come and approach a teacher, say, "Please teach me." They literally had to beg for it. And teacher start thinking, you know, is it worth my time? Is this person going to be, you know, commit to this art? Because it, it takes a long time. And if he shows any kind of uh, weakness, then he's filtered out. He said, no, I, I can't. I'm sorry. Because the teachers didn't take money in those days. It's not like today where you have, you know, school uh, branches and, you know, organization with, you know, one million members. Okay. No, no such thing. The teachers knew it was going to take a long time to learn this properly and it was very selective. But sometimes they took a bad kid, you know, the parent would bring a, a, a wild kid, a teenager who was out of control and, and begged the teacher to take him. And the teacher knowing that, okay, yes, this can eventually discipline the child, will take him. Okay? So in fact, the word discipline, come, uh, disciple comes from that. You, the teacher would take the person and as a student first. In fact, you know, the, traditionally, you can't call the, your teacher uh, Shrifu or Sifu when you join. You call the teacher a common uh, name for a teacher, Lao Shi, or uh, something else. Until the teacher decides that you have proven yourself to be all those, have all those characters in diligent. Uh, the, uh, dedication, responsible, and all that stuff before he accepts you as a disciple. Once you've disciplined yourself, you've proven to have uh, disciplined yourself, okay, then you become a disciple. So it is a way of life where it teaches you to, uh, to live in harmony. Same. When the, the social aspect of, of the uh, school or you know, the group that you're with will teach you to become a better person. So that's what it's really about. Yeah, I know there are guys out there <coughs> who go, go crazy and do uh, take martial arts and abuse it. And then you see that a lot in the movies, very classic uh, uh, theme in the movies where one, one student turns bad and becomes a bad guy, very skilled but bad guy, lacking character, okay, you know, Kung Fu Panda even. They have that uh, same theme, and um, but uh, but in general, uh, martial arts do turn out uh, good people, and that's what it is. It's a way of life. So at this point, I can tell you, uh, I encourage you to to understand the goals of Wing Chun, and and. My Wing Chun. Okay, not every Wing Chun school uh, believe in this and teach this. Uh, but if you are in the same page, same wavelength, then welcome to Wing Chun world and welcome to my Wing Chun world. 
You're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it because, you know, I've been doing it for 50 years. Why would anybody spend so much time doing the same thing? And it's actually not the same thing because it's very deep and rich. I'm still a student of Wing Chun. I'm learning. I'm still learning. And that's a beautiful part of it. I'm still becoming better than I used to be. As I get older, I'm becoming better. I've learned to use less effort, put out less energy, and get a bigger result. And I plan to even get better at that. And so, you have a lot to look forward to. And I really, really welcome you to this. So, this is Wing Chun.